In the last tutorial, we saw that 1 was equal to the string 1 inside the if statement. And what we're doing in this tutorial, and I don't even know if you can call it a tutorial, but we're just going to do some experimentation with converting strings to numbers. So let's get started. So we're trying to figure out how the interpreter did this. And how I'm going to go about this is I haven't consulted the JavaScript documentation or the Mozilla website or anything like that. I'm just purely doing my own experimentation with it and trying to learn something along the way. So we have a variable 5 and it's set to the string 5. We're outputting its type and then the next thing we're doing is we're running this value of method on the 5 and checking the type of that. And you can see that's right here. And we have a string in both case. Now the value of method is usually used on objects in order to return the primitive data type. But in this case, we're already starting out with the primitive data, with primitive data, which is a string. So, so this is useless in this situation because you know we're just converting a string to a string and that, and that didn't do anything. So let's keep going with this. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna run the parseInt function on 5. Okay, this isn't a method of a string or whatever. This is a function. We're running this function on it and we're checking the type of this. Let's see what that is. And we got a number. Now, we didn't change 5's value here. All we did is we ran the parseInt function on this data and then we output it and we can see that so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna check the type of 5 right now and you can see that 5 is a string so this didn't this didn't change the uh, this didn't change its value it, we just output uh, whatever running the parseInt function on this did number but we see 5 is still a string now what we're doing is we are this parse whatever is returned by this parseInt function on 5 we're putting that into 5 let's do that and then we're outputting 5's type again and now we see that 5 is a number so it was different here because we ran this function and whatever it returned we stored it in 5 so we overwrote 5's value and now 5 is a number Here we have uh, a new variable a, and it's set to the number 5 plus the string 5. Let's check that out. And we got, and we got 55. Actually, we, yeah, we just got the string 55. So what it did was it concatenated on this 5 to this one, and we got 55, and this type is going to be string now. We're create, and now we're creating a new variable b is set to the string 5 so let's take a look at this if statement so if the number 5 is equal to this b value which is a string then we're going to output b is a type of b let's do that and we can see that b is a string so here, this, this 5 was converted to a number. If 5 equals 5, this will return true. That's how we were able to do this. So we can see that the JavaScript interpreter, it did convert this. It got the, it got the numeric value of this string, put it in here, then this was able to re return true and then we were able to output this. So what we can see is this, what this JavaScript, what the browser's interpreter did here was very transient. It converted it to a number here, but then we, when we output its type inside, inside the body of this, we saw that it's still a string, okay? Let's keep going. So one note here is that, of course, a boolean is needed inside these parentheses. What is needed here is true or false, and whatever we put in here 
it has to evaluate, to, it will always evaluate to true or false. Okay? The interpreter tries to convert the string to a number. How does it do it? And that's what we're looking in this, uh, in this tutorial. Now we're creating a new variable c and we're setting that to 5 cats. And then we're running the parseInt function on c. Let's take a look at that. And we got 5. So the reason why I did this parseInt thing is because I wanted, basically what we're doing is we're experimenting to see what is the interpreter doing internally when it takes a string like 1 and makes its value equal to 1 and that returns true. The string 1 is equal to 1. So I wanted to see if it was doing something like the parse int. So we're going to test for that. And here we're saying if 5 is equal to C, C is a string of 5 cats. Uh, so if this returns true, then we know that the interpreter used something like parse int to do it. Let's check that out and we can see the interpreter didn't use parse int. So when we use parse int here, we, we're running this function on C. We're not changing C's value. But when we run this on C, five cats will become the number five. But when we checked if they're the same, if five is equal to the string five cats, this didn't return true. So we know that the interpreter is not using anything like parse int. The next thing I did was we're creating a new variable d and it's set to the string 5 with one space after. And if 5 is equal to d, then we're going to output this. 5 is equal to d. So that we saw that when we had something ridiculous like 5 cats, it didn't they weren't equivalent. They didn't have the same value. Now let's try with this and it says 5 is equal to D. So it didn't matter that we had one space after here. Uh, it still, when it did this comparison, this string 5 plus a space was converted to the number 5. This returned true, and then we output this. We can try adding more spaces on here and running that again, and it still says 5 is equal to D. Okay, let's put that back to one space. The next thing we're doing, very similar, we have E. Now we're putting a space in front of it, and we're seeing if this is equal or not. Let's refresh. 5 is equal to D. So it didn't matter if we had some spaces in front. It's still equal. We can try and put some spaces on the back too, and that's still equal. So it doesn't matter how many spaces are in the front or what are in the back. This will convert. When it does this comparison, this gets converted to a number, and this returns true. In our next example, f is set to the string of 5 space 5. And we want to see if 55 is going to be equal to this. Let's check that out. And here it says 55 is not equal to f. So it didn't matter how many spaces we had on the back or the front, but even having one space in the middle, now when this when when the interpreter tried to convert this to a number, it whatever it did, it didn't return the number 55. So here it says 55 is not equal to f. So, so far it seems from our experimentations that it's trimming off white space from the front and it's trimming off white space from the back, but it's not doing it from the middle. Let's keep going. And uh, we've looked at this one already. We know that this is going to return true. A5 is equal to G. Let's just delete that. And we can... Now let's yeah, let's leave that how it is. Okay, 55 is not equal to f. So now I know that it's it's trimming off white space from 
the front or the back. Um, actually, it's not necessarily doing that, but that's what it seems like so far from our experiments. So what I have here is we have a regular expression. Uh, it was I found it online from this guy, and what we're doing here is we're creating a variable called trim, and trim is set to I don't know where my G went. What happened to that? Oh, actually we need this. Okay, so yeah, G is set to five with space on the front, and we know this is going to be equal from the experiments we already did. Five is equal to G. So what we're doing here is we're creating a new variable trim and trim is this g variable or this string right here and we're running this replace method on it and the replace the replace method takes a regular expression as its argument well the first argument is a regular expression which we haven't looked at yet and the next argument is what do you want to replace it with so here we're repla replacing it with an empty string. So we're trying to make this five oops, into like this. Okay, So that's what we're trying to do, trim the white space off the front and the back. And then we're outputting G's length, and then we're outputting trim's length. And this is gonna, just going to show you that this, um, this function worked. So we saw G's length is three, but now trim's length, after we ran this method on it, and then we returned that to trim, it returned a length of 1. So what I was thinking might be happening was that this sort of thing was happening on the number in order to get rid of whatever white space is going on. We can add some more stuff and we can and now you can see that, um, let's just uh, comment this out first. So here you can see G's length changed, but, the, but after we ran this, this, um, this regular expression on it, this replace method, that the length was 1. So it did get rid of all the white space off the front and the back. So what I was thinking was it was doing some sort of method like this on, on the data, and then it was converting it to a number. But another possibility is this one. So here we have H and it's set to the string 4 with a space on the front of the back and then we're resetting H's value to H minus 0. Then we're checking the type of that and then we're outputting H and let's see that. So here we can see that now here h is a string but after we set h to this expression h was converted to a number and the number is 4 so just by just just by doing a simple uh, math expression like this we didn't even need to use um, this uh, this replace method and it trimmed off the white space and it converted it from a string to a number In our last example, we have i is set to 4, space 4, and then we're doing i is equal to i minus 0. We're outputting its type, and then we're writing it out. And we got an error. Is it because of this? Okay. So in this case, it didn't work. It didn't work when there's a space in the middle, and that makes sense because now this is just turned into a sentence. It's not a number anymore. This is like a phrase. I was set to 4, space 4. I is set to I minus 0. I'll put the type and write it out. And we can see that the type of was a number which I didn't believe because how could 4, space 4 become a number? And then when I actually check the number we saw that it's not a number. So this is an interesting interesting thing in JavaScript that not a number, the type of not a number is a number. And I was able to find um, this definition online. So not a number means the specific value cannot be represented 
within the limitations of the numeric type. And this seemed like a good enough explanation for me, and that was found from Pax Diablo from stackoverflow.com. Thanks for listening.